Well, good morning or good afternoon, uh, whatever time of day, evening it is that you're watching this video. This is uh, designed to help you record vocals um, into Reaper. Um, so around my mouse, we have our effects. These are our track effects, and these would be delays, reverbs, uh, even compression, things like that that you can use after the fact. The effects placed on this track, whatever they might be, are not recorded into Reaper. Okay, when you when you hit record, the effect will not be recorded under the track. Okay, so that's a really important part of this process. This effects in next to your input that you've selected. My microphone is plugged into input number four, um, so you're seeing and hearing my voice uh, on this track. Uh, and that is run into input four. I have eight inputs on my Scarlett 18i20 interface, very similar to a Scarlett 2i2 that only has two inputs. Um, I'm using Focusrite stuff. This is the part that I love about Reaper, and it allows you to insert effects on the input. These effects will be recorded. Um, so, one of the most important effects, and I do this on almost every single um, session that I record. Here are your here is your effects window. If you let's let's start over. We'll guide you through this. You push this effects in input effects window. Yeah, click on that. You go to your VST plugins, and I have effects in here that I've purchased, and so your window won't look like this. However, the recomp effect. Select that one, double click on it, or click on it and hit OK. Now, remember that this is recording um, the effect into onto the track. Um, I use, I always use a preset. If I'm doing uh, lead vocals, I often use this modern vocal. And what you will see when I uh, select this is that now I've got some compression happening on my voice and you can see it here and hear it uh, I'm really squishing it right now um, you know it's it's important to test this effect out singing at, at a level that you would normally sing at you don't want to just check it talking don't ever blow into a microphone don't whistle into it don't blow into it speak into it as if you're telling a story to sound check uh, the vocal microphone just talk about going grocery shopping or something like that and make the little adjustments that you need and then hit it kinda hard and see what that at the level that you're singing uh, is compressing um, I like to have a bit of compression on that um, this uh, preset modern vocal seems to be really good and I usually don't alter any of the settings on it aside from the threshold right here this control is very very important so I use this modern uh, vocal plugin on every vocal that I do and I usually compress it I want to see all oh, five to six DB of uh, compression and if I sing pretty hard you can see that I get that ac accomplished uh, so depending on your gain structure of your microphone and how hot your microphone is hitting uh, the computer you may need to adjust this threshold uh, to a, a point that is appropriate it's not uh, the idea is not to hear it the idea is to use the effect to enhance your vocal performance and you know a, a couple of rehearsals with the compressor set a certain way are is very very helpful in getting this compressor set correctly what this compressor does is it prevents you from blowing up the track and in some cases clipping the track I typically do not use a limiter on the input of a vocal track if you're clipping the input you need to step back from the microphone or turn the gain down and what I'm doing right now is on my interface I am going to turn the gain way down so now I have backed the input gain off and my voice has gotten much quieter now I'm going to turn it up a bit 
now I'm back to about where I started okay and you can see that that compressor is doing a little bit of work uh, to compress my voice so now if I get start hitting it harder you notice my voice stays at pretty much the same volume that it is when I'm speaking but when I speak hotter it stays at a pretty even uh, level that is a very very important effect it's a way to protect a perfect vocal take without necessarily hearing the compressor yes a professional engineer <clears throat> may detect a bit of compression being used that's why in the big boy world of recording um, they're running vocals through um, an LA-2A or an LA-3A or whatever type of $50,000 compressor that they have. You know, it makes the vocals really smooth and even. Now, if I crank the input gain up, I'm going to turn it up quite a bit. Now, oh boy, look at all that compression. So as you can see in adjusting the uh, input, uh, gain on your microphone uh, you can adjust that compression this is a bit hot uh, for the signal and you can see the signal going in and if I hit the microphone really hard it doesn't do anything but if I remove this compressor from now I can probably clip it so now I'm moving it back down to do some compression and even out my vocal performance um, I have my gain set way too hot for this channel. I'm going to turn it down. Okay, so now I'm at a level that I really like. Um, I've got the compressor set at a level that if I'm singing, it does do a, a good job of doing some compression. Um, again, it's you get that perfect vocal take, and you hit it too hard, and you clip. You cannot fix that. Uh, and it's unfortunate. All right, so we've got, uh, that's really the generally the one effect that I use on the input. Um, now, there is one other effect that I will often use on the input effect. And we can see our effect here, and these are the effects that are on that channel on the input. I will often include a re-EQ, right? Um, I'm going to close this, or so EQ is sitting here floating. Now, often what I will do, the human voice doesn't have a lot of bass frequencies in it. I will grab this first channel and turn it down, put a low shelf on this, or a high-pass filter, which doesn't allow these low frequencies in this area to be passed through the microphone. And I usually cut... Um, it shows you the frequency. I usually start a cut, um, meaning cutting the low frequencies off, at about 160, 150 hertz. There's nothing but noise down there. Now, this bandwidth option allows you to watch this curve right here. As I move this bandwidth, you'll see that it, it straightens this line out a bit and brings up a bit more of the frequencies right where this cut. And if we go a long ways, we can actually boost a little bit of those low frequencies. Um, again, uh, we're boosting right here in the 200 area of the EQ. Um, I don't like to boost a whole lot. Um, I typically do some deductive uh, EQing uh, when I EQ uh, items, whether it be a guitar or uh, a vocal. At this point, uh, we should have a pretty good sounding vocal and we won't have all this low end in there disrupting, making a bunch of mud and noise. The kick drum, the bass guitar, other bass instruments, synth pads and things like that need to occupy this space down here. If we don't have it on our vocal, we're not eating up that space in the EQ spectrum and the stuff is going to sound clear and concise when we play those items in our mix. Okay. So we have two effects, and I often will put, uh, let's, let's go back. Um, I often will put the EQ in front of the compressor. That way that compressor is compressing the EQ uh, settings and the sound of my voice after it's gone through the EQ. You don't hear a lot of difference. I can rearrange these, and you're pretty much hearing no change in my voice, and you're hearing exactly what I'm hearing. But I like to put my EQ in front of it, uh, maybe call it superstition. OK, 
Okay, I've got a sneeze. Hang on. So now we have our input effects that will be recorded onto this track. If I push record right now, now my uh, voice is being compressed and uh, I can turn this compressor on and off. If I turn the compressor off, now you will see a much uh, more broad spectrum of volume being recorded. If I turn the compressor back on, now my voice does not get louder. You don't see a lot in here and you shouldn't mix with your eyes. You should mix with your ears. Okay, let's stop that. Uh, we're going to delete that. Yeah, I don't want to see that. Okay, now the effects on the channel. These effects again are not recorded. I will often use a re-delay. My beats per minute is set at 120. So if I open this delay, so if I open this delay, wow, wow, okay. So okay. now I have so now I a have bunch of delay on my bunch voice. Of delay kind on of my annoying. Voice but if I run this so wet knob down to where it's appropriate, so just barely audible. Okay. If I stop okay. talking, if you I can definitely talking, hear it. You can definitely hear it. Now, if I bring the feedback now, up, a little, bit, feedback up a little bit, you'll hear a few taps. And we can shorten that a little bit more or make it a little less wet. You don't want these to be real um, noticeable. They can more act like a reverb effect than a delay effect uh, if you use them, especially holding notes. Um, I usually set a high pass filter uh, around 200 hertz so that the delays are not delaying frequencies down in that lower register, which are just mud. And I drag the top end down to about 10 to 9 to 10 hertz, 9 to 10,000 hertz. All right, so now our delay is sounding really nice. And we have it set for eighth notes. Uh, if I go up here and change the beats per minute, um, I'm going to type in uh, 110. Now, the delay is much slower. And it's in time with the tempo of the song. So if you're recording a song at, uh, let's say, 96, let's go to 90. We'll hear a drastic change. We'll hear drastic. We'll hear drastic. Okay. Now we've got a little bit of delay on there. It is tapping in perfect quarter notes, which is not good. Four means, or I'm sorry, eighth notes, whatever. I usually will take this measurement and type 3.98. So now, if we turn our click on, Check. 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 You can see that the delay time is not hitting directly with the click track. Click. 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 Hmm, let's make this a little bit less. Let's go 3.6. Click. As now you can see that it's not tapping in time. Having the delay tap in time is not necessarily a good idea. You kind of, the delays get lost and we'll bypass the delay effect. Now I have it shut off. If you want to bypass an effect in Reaper, you just click this little X up here. Now it's on. Now it's bypassed. Um, now, another effect that you can use in your, um, on your track that doesn't get recorded is the reverb. Um, where is it? Reverb. Uh-huh. And we go up to a preset and sweet verb. That's wet. Turn the wetness down so that it's just barely audible. And now you've got a nice reverb and you've got a delay. So the delay is also having some of this reverb added to it. There you go. Now you've got a really nice wet um, vocal 
to uh, mess with. Now, if you want to add distortion to your vocal track, and these uh, time-based effects, I'm going to turn them off. These time-based effects should go generally go last in your um, vocal chain. Um, I like to do that. Um, we need to go to a, a um, an amp simulator, which is typically in the JS effects, and we'll go. Let's let's just type in uh, distortion. Oh, distortion JS distortion fuzz. Let's try this. Oh my goodness. Listen to that. Dry mix, wet mix. Let's turn the wet mix down a little bit. So now we've got a little bit of distortion. That thing's kind of panned over to the left. Oh, let's go uh, stereo. So now we've got a nice uh, wet, and we'll go bring our dry. Let's see. I've, I've never used this effect before, so here we go. Now we've got dry and wet and we can clean it up but still have a little bit of distortion on it. If we want it really distorted, we can go that right. I don't know what the shape button does. Let's check that out and see. Yeah, it brings in some almost compression. Uh, seems like the stock settings are generally uh, very nice. Aside from on this, the wet is very wet. And so we'll, we'll bring the dry up. And again, this doesn't record onto your track. This is just um, distortion that is used as post-recording. And if we turn the delay and the reverb on, now we have a really cool sounding distorted vocal. So uh, a little bit of advice on this. And if you want to bypass all the effects, hit the power button on the effects. And bye-bye. No effects, right? So now all I have going is an EQ and a compressor on the input. And uh, that should do it. I need to compress this a little bit harder, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. You want to hit about 6 dB or so, 5 to 6 dB of noise reduction. You're going to hit the microphone hard. So remember, text your mic and see how much compression you're getting. There you go. Happy recording. Happy recording.